And Steve Rogers, retired lieutenant detective with, him, with the Nutley, New Jersey Police Department, also a former member of the FBI's Joint Terrorism Task Force. Steve, when you and I uh, last spoke last evening here at Fox, uh, we only had one shooting to deal with. Now there are two. Does it seem to you that uh, this is a copycat situation, that, that the guy in Ohio was somehow inspired by what went down in El Paso? Well, John, this is what law enforcement is concerned about, that there are indeed copycats out there just waiting to, if you will, pull their trigger. I mean, all the news media coverage about this uh, incident in El Paso could have very well uh, caused this individual to do what he did. But saying that, John, you know, when you and I were talking last night, the predominant question was what? How do we prevent this? How do we address these things before they happen? And if you don't mind, uh, when you're ready, I'll go into that. Well, yeah, look, that is the big question of the day. Of course, politicians are, are um, you know, decrying what happened and, and saying that it's time for more gun control, et cetera. Is that going to end these kinds of uh, mass shootings? There's two ways to look at this. One is the reactive and the proactive. Let's talk about the reactive. We saw within the past 48 hours, uh, police officers respond to very critical situations within a real small amount of time, and they neutralize the killers. And by the way, uh, uh, let's not escape the fact that it was President Donald Trump who provided these police officers uh, in a lot of these incidents with the equipment that they need to respond. So he is responding very, very uh, responsibly. Number two, proactive, very important. We need to in, in, enhance our intelligence and information sharing, John. Very critical, especially involving the public with providing uh, the police on a local level with information. How do they do that? Well, we're, hopefully we're going to see an enhancement and increasing of community policing around the country. John, when I, when I was on a police force, we walked the streets. We knew who had a cold. We knew what kid was getting into trouble. So when people and the police have a great relationship, you'd be surprised how much intelligence and information the police gather. And the police are trained about the who, uh, what, when, where, and why people do things. And then, of course, the president mentioned this morning about the expansion of mental health services key to this. We need to get local communities involved with the state governments and federal government to increase those services. And finally, and I mentioned this last night, we need to get our clergy involved, our ministers, our priests, our rabbis, whatever faith you are, we need those people involved because they reach more people on a day of worship than any politician can perhaps in, in a year. The, uh, uh, the, the, the feeling seems to be that, um, you know, so often in these situations, there were warning signs. Somebody said, oh, yeah, I heard him threaten or I heard him say he was going to do this. But people are afraid uh, to turn people in because, you know, they don't want to get sued or they don't want to get black marked or whatever. Is that going to change? I believe it will, and you're absolutely right. Uh, during the course of, of an overwhelming number of these investigations, unfortunately, after the incidents, we find out that there was something on social media. There was something said in a chat room. Uh, police don't have, uh, uh, I'm sorry, people do not have to leave their names with the police. They can report these things anonymously, and believe me, they will follow up uh, leads. But let me add this, too, about social media. Uh, and I mentioned this last night, you and I could go on any social media platform and we'll see bullies beating children up, adults fighting in parking lots. There's just too much of this going on and the social media giants have to monitor their platforms a bit better and just remove this stuff. There's no redeeming value to showing this stuff on social media. Steve Rogers, formerly with the Joint Terrorism Task Force. Thank you. Thank you. Well, the manhunt for two teenagers